Hello, my name is Marcus with MLC CAD Systems, and today I want to take you deeper into the enhancements to sheet metal and structure systems in SOLIDWORKS 2023. So I'm going to open up this bracket, and as you can see, it needs to be just a little bit longer if we're going to cover some of these connectors. And at the part level, you'll see that we've got a base flange that is defining its width, right? Uh, this dimension here, it's a 7 inch in one direction and 1 inch in the other. So I'm just going to take this 1 inch out to 3 inches. And I'll go ahead and use my ruler here on Instant 3D to get that done and snap it right into place. Now when I do that, it goes ahead and rebuilds, but do you notice there's a rebuild error here in this dialog? What this is is a new capability to create a sensor that will automatically check your flat pattern size against a specific value. In this case, I have it set to 10 inches, or at least the, the design is 10 inches in width, uh, but the actual uh, warning level is 9. So if I edit the sensor, you can see sheet metal bounding box, sheet metal bounding box width, and it says alert me if it's greater than 9. Now this would be appropriate if you uh, periodically make parts that tend to be really big and you're not sure it's going to fit your sheet size. Maybe this is going to be punched out of a, a long strip of metal uh, and that metal strip is 9 inches in width, in which case we'd have to change to a new machine if we make a design that exceeds that 9 inch uh, requirement. So I don't want to kind of rock the boat here. I don't want to make any changes that are going to mess that up. So I'm going to just change that to 2 inches instead of 3 what that does, it gives us the 9 inches, and that's the limit of what we can do for this part. No rebuild errors. Everything was looking really good. So that's going to help me to kind of avoid any embarrassing problems when I send something out to the shop that won't fit on the machine. Next thing I want to take a look at is the bend radiuses on this part. Uh, when I built it, I just dimensioned the bend radiuses directly uh, and just added thickness. But if you see here, this radius is 1.29. Notice I can just measure by clicking in the graphics area and it just shows it at the bottom. And this inside radius here is 1.5. Now why are they different when this sketch has them as equal radiuses? 1.5 for both. Well, one of them was correctly handled, the other one changed on me, and that's because of the way material thickness is added to a sheet metal part. It's got to be added to the top or to the bottom. But in this case, I want the radiuses to be the same inside and out. And so what I can do is come into this new option and do symmetric, effectively a mid-plane thickness addition for your sheet metal part, which is great if your dimensions are nominal dimensions. This is give you as close to the nominal dimensions or centerline dimensions as possible. And in this scenario, it has the benefit of giving me a 1.4 and a 1.4 bend radius, so they're now going to be consistent and ready for manufacturing. Let's take a look at the drawing next. In the drawing environment, a lot of times you'll come in here and you'll drop in dimensions for everything, uh, but one of the things you often want to specify is the gauge of sheet metal. But that's not a measurable value, that's actually almost like a lookup. You say it's this thickness, this thickness represents uh, whatever gauge you have. Now, you can go ahead and link to that now. This is a new option. If you say in your note, you say link to property, grab the component to which the annotation is attached, and then we'll come down here to sheet metal gauge. And what it's doing is it's calculating the gauge value based on the thickness you picked. So you don't have to put any kind of you know, intelligence together to try to get it to say the right gauge. And if you change the thickness, it's going to automatically update. Now, here's a quick pro tip. If you go in here and go to the Annotations tab, there is this new option for Cut List Properties. This has been uh, new for a few years now, but if you'll notice, it's now added to this list. And this is a great way to come in here and just grab the formula and any parameters, or just drop the whole note on your sheet, make it quick and easy to get to. Let's go back to the assembly because I want to do a structure system. I want to build a frame around this machine. I already have a frame started, and it's actually going to be kind of a crate that we're going to build around it. So the crate has this 3D sketch pre-built. 
Uh, I want to show you how this 3D sketch is pre-built because it's pretty, uh, pretty simple, but it's also pretty nice. You start out by just bl building blocks. In this case, it looks like we're building kind of a Lego block. And that's the shape I want my frame to be in, where all these corners are. But now there's an actual entity there that I can grab hold of. So when you do the 3D sketch, instead of drawing in space and dimensioning things blindly, you're picking corners and edges, and you can even just grab a face and do convert entities, and it very quickly allows you to build up your entire sketch. And then the last step is just to delete that body out so that you're only left with the frame. Another benefit is that these dimensions remain for this block. And unlike a 3D sketch, which sometimes will flip on you a little bit, uh, these are just extrude bosses. If you go backwards, it'll be turned into an extrude cut. Uh, very simple and easy, and it's going to get you exactly what you need with very little 3D sketching effort. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I didn't really change anything, so I'm just going to not worry about saving it. I'm going to turn off this hide all types because that was hiding all these sketch entities. And I'm actually going to build it right here inside the assembly to make sure I have clearances where I need them. I could do this with a weldment, but I'm going to go do this with a structure system. Now with structure systems, effectively what you do is you execute the command and you jump into the structure system's environment. Then you start adding primary members, secondary members, and all the rest. So let's create a primary member. And for the primary member, we'll grab a ANSI inch. Now here's a new thing for this year, and it was actually started in Service Pack 3 or 4 of 2022. But if you have those configured uh, weldment profiles, or even those individual weldment profiles in the subfolders, they're all now supported inside structure systems. So you don't have to limit yourself to just using configured profiles like we did before. So I've got the size, I've got everything ready to go. Now watch this, I'm just going to box select the entire thing, and it's just going to grab all of the entities and create them. I mean, super, super simple, right? Uh, in weldments, I would have had to grab these in various groups. That would have kind of defined or you know, affected the corner trim order, and the corner trim then would have had to been repaired on several of these corners. So super fast and, and very, very easy to do. Next thing I want to do is I want to create some secondary members. We want to create effectively some bumper walls here along the sides to create a, a tighter cage. And we'll use secondary member to do that. So for the secondary member, we'll go ahead and come down here. And I've pre-created a few planes in some distinct places. So now this plane right here is where I want these entities to go. And I want them to just kind of go piece to piece. So I'll pick my profile. Now, this is a, a kind of a behavior in the pre-release version where it needs you to pick it each time, uh, but that should be fixed in the full production. But basically, click once, click twice, and it puts a member between one to the other. Now, to do another one on this wall, I do have to click this guy again, and then come over here, click this one again, come over here, click this one again, come over here, Notice it put four members really, really quick, no sketching required whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and pin this and click OK because I want to do this one more time with this plane down here. And so I'll grab plane 12. And now this time I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to kind of double click the rest of them. So I click my first one, then I double click. Nope, I went too fast. <laughs> there we go. There to there, and there to there. So you can't go super double click, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and click the OK button there. And we've got ourselves a really nice frame ready to roll. All right, now there's no corner trims yet. So the corner details are completely left to be determined, but we at least have it started. So I exit the well, the structure systems profile uh, environment, and we end up with corner trims. So if you notice, it's not trimmed yet, but it automatically takes us into the corner management. I'm going to accept these defaults, and I'm going to come down here and pick a corner from my uh, structure systems frame. 
Now it grabs that corner, and then I can come in here and look at each of the individual members and choose whether I want them to trim sooner or later than any others. So my, my request, or my, what I want this to do, is for this piece to be trimmed last, meaning the corner will already be taken up by these other two, and this one just butts up underneath. But then, these guys are equal still, so there's a miter in the corner, and I don't want that. I want to just butt it in all directions. So what I'm going to do is say, I want this one that goes across the structure. I want that one to go all the way through, and the other one to butt up against it. So that needs to go up, and notice now I have it exactly the way I want it to be. Now I want to group these similar corners, so if I click Group Similar Corners and zoom out, you can see all these pink arrows. It's going to automatically apply that same trim to all of them. Now the first time I did this, I thought, I wonder if it's going to trim it correctly and make this member go all the way through, and I'll show you what it does. When it goes through and builds it, it's actually super intelligent. This member stays untrimmed all the way through, and everything butts up against that member directly. And that's true all the way around. I always have this member headed this direction, full length. So now the cut length on each of these is going to be all completely identical. Uh, I could have also done it the other way to make these cut lengths identical with those end pieces. Uh, but that's how I wanted it to be so that I could put, you know, uh, something like a rod through it to carry it or something like that. All right, so I'm feeling really good about this. What I next want to do next is just open this crate up in its own window because I want to put a couple connection elements in. Now, connection elements, you've probably seen some of these elements uh, in weldments. So a lot of times in weldments, it'll be like a gusset feature or something like that. Uh, in this case, I want to insert a, a gusset plate, but I want a gusset plate that has some holes in it. And if you notice, here's my gusset plate. Got a nice little preview to show me what it is. I've got a size drop down. You can customize these or, or create your own from a part. But then you just add them very similar to a library part. So I click once to set the first plane. The second plane, notice it's highlighting it right here. It needs to go on this wall. And then the third element is going to set the offset vertically. So I'm going to grab that face right there. And I want to offset that placement by one inch. Now this is a two inch tube on a metric system. Don't, don't ask me how we ended up here. But it's looking really good. I click OK and it put in this really nice, completely custom piece. So now I could come in and screw down or bolt down maybe a floor or a ceiling panel uh, on this top piece. I want to do that for the ceiling and for the floor. But I don't want to have to do that whole process over and over again, so we'll use the Pattern Connection Element Routine. Check this out. This is probably the easiest thing you'll do all day. Select the connection element. All the pink arrows show up, and it just patterns it to all the corners. Super easy, super nice. Uh, in weldments, this would have not taken all that much longer, but it would have been a lot more manual effort of clicking in and modifying things one at a time. And if anything changed too much, uh, I may have to go in and do some more cleanup and manual work to get it looking just the way I like it. So this one did a great job of helping me to very quickly build up this crate. And I can use this now uh, just about anywhere I want. Now let's say I've got this model. Uh, there's a couple different models. One of them involves a lot heavier system inside. And so if that's the case, right, you've got a system that is just much heavier than, than standard and you want to create a beefier frame for it, it is possible to come in here and create another configuration. So let's do the three inch configuration and we're going to try to set this up to use three inch tubes instead of two. So now that I'm in my three inch configuration, I can go into my structure systems Edit the feature of the tube feature. This is where all the tube sizes are. And basically all I'm going to do is just go in and change the profile selection to choose it to a different one. So we'll go profile. Instead of 2 inch by 2 inch, we're going to do 3 inch by 3 inch. Makes a much beefier profile. And then check it out. Simple, just like everything else. This configuration only.